And Steve, you can start uh, whenever you want. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the uh, Harris Wofford Awards for 2022. We're absolutely thrilled to have all of you here today. And um, we're particularly thrilled to be um, recognizing uh, probably our longest serving board member, Senator Harris Wofford. Uh, Harris uh, and I first met at the National Service Conference in 1996 and became fast friends and compatriots and world travelers. And uh, we've been to Africa together, we've been to Europe together and uh, all over the United States uh, trying to figure out how do we ignite the world around young people and giving them the opportunities to, uh, to make the world a better place. So we are particularly happy to continue to um, honor Senator Wofford uh, we lost him, unfortunately, to um, uh, to illness, and and uh, uh, he passed away on Martin Luther King Day, which ironically was the day that he created when he was in the Senate for um, uh, to make a national holiday. Uh, uh, Harris was always good with timing, and that was a particularly uh, uh, interesting one there. But we are, are really thrilled to uh, to be promoting and and to be. Um, uh, celebrating six amazing organizations that we know Harris would embrace. And he actually knew several of them. So I, kn I know that he'll be happy about this looking down on us today. And we're thrilled that we actually have uh, Harris's daughter with us, uh, Suzanne Wofford. Suzanne is a, um, a national scholar, uh, particularly um, well known for her work with Shakespeare, but, but um, she's a teacher in the Department of English at uh, New York University, NYU, and she's coming to us today from the green mountains of Vermont, where she's up at the Breadloaf School, um, which is a, an, another famous place that uh, uh, is well known for its English program. So, Suzanne, uh, I'm going to turn to you to talk a little bit about your dad and, and his legacy, and then we'll go ahead and honor these amazing uh, six winners. Um, I'm Suzanne Wofford, and I'm speaking on behalf of the Wofford family to say how honored we are to have these awards uh, uh, named in honor of my father, who was a great believer and lover of national service. Um, the uh, uh, award uh, honors something that my father devoted his life to. When he was a young man, he was in high school when World War II was, uh, he graduated from high school in 1944. And he joined the army, um, planning to serve abroad, though from the point of view of the family, luckily it ended um, before he had a chance to serve abroad. But he believed that um, that experience of being in the army for a year before going to college really changed his life. And it made him feel that service was something that should be a part of every young person's or every person's life. No reason for it only to be young people. Um, though that's the, where we are right now um, in Youth Service America. Um, my father uh, went on to um, devote himself to service in a number of different arenas. And I imagine many of you know about him, but just in case you don't, um, he was one of the founders of the Peace Corps. And compulsory national service and people should be core or in youth service America or in the army, they should, they should contribute in whatever ways were right for them. Um, but he believed very deeply that this was a life transforming experience. Not only was it an experience of, of civic engagement um, that was important for the country, to, uh, having us have citizens change the country and make their difference through service, but he also believed that it changed the people, um, those people who are winning our awards today, our examples, um, that you were never the same after you had understood your citizenship in the context of service. He went on um, later in his life to, um, he was involved in uh, uh, running several uh, colleges and universities, but he um, later became the CEO of National Service under Clinton and was um, very instrumental, I think, in recovering um, the 
just the service abroad part, which was his Peace Corps passion, um, but service in the country um, in all sorts of different ways in different sorts of organizations, as well as in um, the uh, 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 form of national service, uh, the Corporation for National Service. So just to say that this is, uh, this is something that he believed very deeply in. He worked closely with Steve Culbertson for many, many years, um, was a great supporter of Youth Service America, and, and really believed that this is something that we need to make possible to make our country not, as I said before, not just better in terms of what the service provides, which is of course very important, but that the way it changed would really change our country and, and probably be one of the, the few spaces right now where we can get beyond some of our partisan divides. So I'm really here just to say thank you to Steve and to Youth Service America for honoring my father in this way and for helping us to keep his legacy living. I hope that um, all of us will continue to find ways. And Steve is a great, Steve Culbertson, who's been the leader, of course, of Youth Service America, has been such a great of somebody who's committed to finding ways to make service continue to happen and be recognized and be valued. Um, so uh, congratulations to the winners and thank you for giving us this honor for my father. Thank you, Susie. That was um, so well done. And, and I have to say, I got a little emotional looking at all those photographs um, with so many, you know, people that I knew and, and that Harris loved. And um, of course, uh, I have the picture of him with John F. Kennedy on the, uh, the lawn of the White House as they sent off that first class of, of Peace Corps volunteers. Uh, I have that up on my mantle and uh, I just you know, always treasure that gift from your father. So, um, well, let's let's jump into the awards because we have a terrific group of, of um, organizations to honor today. And, and we're really thrilled that uh, they will, uh, in fact, get to, to respond to this and we'll hear from them. But let me uh, just start in the, the order uh, uh, that you've seen it on the web page, and that's uh, Queen Anne's uh, county public schools. Uh, they're recognized for their service learning program that engages students in high quality service learning experiences in elementary, middle, and high school. They have gone absolutely comprehensive, uh, integrating service learning into required courses. And they count all the hours that, um, that young people spend uh, on the entire serving lear service learning process. Our Vice President for Partnerships, uh, Scott Gansky, likes to remind us that um, that investigation piece where they're really learning about the issue and trying to understand it um, is, uh, is just such a powerful time in that entire service learning journey. So we're thrilled to, uh, to present the first Terrace Wofford Award today uh, to Queen, Anne County, Queen Anne's County Public Schools, where the future begins. I love that. I think you're muted. There you go. Good afternoon, everyone. Am I on? You are on, Michael. Thank you. Thank you for being All right, here. Beautiful. I'm catching a little reverb, so I'm going to turn my speakers down and I'm going to share my screen with everybody. And I'm so excited and, and honored for to be selected for Queen Anne's County. I mean, we're a very small district and we have a very locally designed uh, project-based program, but we touch elementary, middle, and high, and it's it's been very exciting. So let me share my screen with everyone. So in Queen Anne's County Public Schools, our journey begins in grade six. Hang on one second here. Let me let me backtrack. There we go. So in, in the elementary level, we combine grades four and five for 15 total service hours. And then when students move on to sixth, seventh, and eighth, that's where the meat of the service learning 
projects take place where each year they combine another 15 hours for a total 45 hours. And then by the time they enter high school, all students realistically, we love them to be entering high school with 60 credit hours so that they complete one project moving into high school, and then they start be building upon those experiences that are integrated within the classes, and that expands out into some independent projects. So let me share just a few uh, of the great experiences and, and what we've been able to do. So Art for Your Home, this was the very first partnership that I created when taking on the role as a service learning coordinator, and I'm also a supervisor in Queen Anne's County over visual and performing arts, world languages, school library media. So I'm able to touch on a lot of different areas. In this case, we were able to bring the visual arts on board. So we partnered with Haven Ministries and they had this amazing idea and it was in partnership with Rick Strittmater from the Queen Anne's County Arts Council and Krista Pettit and Phil Stapleton from the Haven Ministries where they wanted to create a, a project where they would get donations from the community for artwork for homeless that were transitioning into homes for the very first time. So this is where we stepped in and we said, well, what could we do to make this a better experience? Because often they were getting artworks that were donated that they were artworks that people didn't want. So we charged our National Art Honor Society students in Stephanie Zeiler took the lead on this at Queen Anne's County High and did an amazing job where they created artwork just for them. So this was a picture from the final culmination. This springboarded into the next year where we did something called Paddles for Hope, where they painted hopeful messages on images on oars that were donated by the Haven Ministries, and half of the ORS supported a, a big fundraiser for that, and it, it piggybacked on our Art for Home initiative, which was wonderful, and it also spoke to our local area. Courageous Marks. Now, this one was an interesting one that came about after a collaboration with other county arts teachers at a workshop that was led by the Maryland State Department of Education that was focusing on arts integration, which is a big thing in Queen Anne's County as well. Project focused on using the arts to help raise awareness for mental health and help erase the stigma through artful conversations. So there was a QR code placed on the back of these, if you can see the tiles there and the images that the students worked on. Um, on the back of the tiles, that QR code would send you to a website that contain information with complete with local and national resources to help people struggling with mental health, while also receiving a positive message about the project. The tiles were then placed all around the community for people to find, and they were placed on social media and conversations started. High school staff uh, also joined the project, as well as our National Art Honor Society students, teaching faculty members how to create their own tiles the project later evolved into tiles and magnets and were taken on a trip all the way to Louisville, Kentucky for a convention placed around that area. So this was a very big uh, project that took on a national stage. Wreaths of Hope. So this year, uh, our students got involved with a mini workshop on creating wreaths for Ms. Seiler's National Art Honor Society. And we even got board members stop by to create uh, wreaths that were made into decorative arrangements donated uh, during the holiday season. And they're already beginning planning out what next year's will look like. So this has been a huge, big, big community partnership that has evolved over time and it evolves each year. And it really builds off empathy. Now, some other stuff that's really important as well um, that touches elementary, middle and high um, efforts in preservation and res in, uh, restoration. So the preservation of history, there's a numerous district-wide Veterans Day projects that take place and students begin the units uh, with an extensive study of what it means to be a veteran. The entire schools get involved and the bands get involved and it's a really exciting thing where they even perform colonial activities, putting on theatrical shows that are reflective of that daily life. And 
in the realm of restoration, we also have a watershed awareness and Bay Days where fourth grade students get to learn about the Chesapeake Bay. And, you know, while they're learning about the Chesapeake Bay, even our fourth graders lead younger students on guided tours through uh, school gardens to teach them about native plants and benefits of the environment. They do cleanups. They do uh, watershed awareness. We have a project called Bay Days where it's a two-day uh, event focusing on environmental literacy standards. And in another school, we even created pollinator gardens on the school grounds. And in class, that's where they learn about what the pollinator is and they research issues regarding this. So this is a little sampling of what it is that we do in Queen Anne's County Public Schools to really bring real life, real world experiences to the students and provide service that is truly meaningful uh, to kids. And while many schools are working with acting, um, action plans, and so forth. That's a big focus for a lot of places. We really dive into the first part, the investigative process, and selecting meaningful needs that includes community partners. And then we celebrate. Uh, we do a lot with articles that we put out in the newspaper locally, and we do a lot of recording of the activities so that we can reshare it and we don't need to reinvent the wheel each year for the kids. They can see how they can take an active part in everyone's lives. So we really appreciate this honor. I know Dr. Salins and Dr. Sprankle, our superintendent and assistant superintendent, they're outside. We're at an a &S right now, uh, or they would be here with us too, but they'll be excited to catch this honor and rewind. So thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. And I wish we could replicate you in every, you know, one of the 14,000 school districts across America. Terrific, terrific work. And, you know, I think we we all know the Chesapeake Bay is as a uh, as the largest estuary in the world. But, uh, you know, those of us from New England forget that a big part of the revolution was fought down here. And, uh, you know, the, the French and the British had their big battle at the mouth of the Chesapeake and the British invaded Philadelphia coming into Maryland through the Chesapeake. So, Lots of history, and, and it's just exciting to see that you've captured that. The other thing I want to point out is what a great job you've done in terms of pulling in community partners. Uh, you know, kids don't live in schools. They live in communities, and, and you've done a terrific job about, you know, really integrating community into the classroom. So congratulations on winning the uh, 2022 Harris Wofford Common Good Award. All right. Let's go on to the next grantee, uh, awardee, I should say, and that's Volunteer Iowa. Volunteer Iowa is recognized for their work as a Youth Service America, Youth Service Zone. And uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. Those of you who know Harlem, Harlem Children's Zones, you know what these zones are like where you do concentrated work. And this is statewide, of course, and, and we're honoring their work um, in, in, in building the capacity of organizations in Iowa to increase youth participation, including a very cool survey they did of youth across the, the uh, state uh, to produce the barriers to youth participation and service and the community report. So that report is available on the 50by250.org website. Uh, you should definitely check that out because we've got to, we've got to lower those barriers. We've got to figure out how to um, uh, how to uh, uh, increase the the number of young people that have the opportunity to contribute, not be spectators. And we're thrilled that Cameron is joining us today and uh, to accept the award. And hi, Cameron. Hi. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. That was such a nice introduction. So I don't uh, have you, to speak anymore. You can yeah. Just no. 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 We want to hear from you. <laughs> Tell us what's going on out yeah. there. Was, yeah. I was out there during the election, and I love Iowa. I've spent a lot of time out there. It's a fantastic yeah. state, and uh, we're just thrilled to honor you today. Yeah. Well, thank you again, and thank you, Youth Service America and Michael and Nikki and Scott for all their help on this. Um, 
and the Allstate Foundation. This is really such an honor. Um, I'm Cameron. I'm a Youth Service Learning AmeriCorps VISTA member. Uh, I end my year of service next week, so this is kind of a nice way to celebrate all the work that I've accomplished this year. Um, we are a state commission, so we're Iowa's um, state agency dedicated to volunteerism. And probably about three years ago, we started working with Youth Service America on as a Youth Service Zone uh, grantee. Um, and that kind of really launched our work in this field and working to increase youth service opportunities, removing those barriers, increasing service learning, um, et cetera, et cetera. So it's been an exciting three years. Like I mentioned, one of the big things that we've accomplished was this barriers to youth um, service report. And I want to thank two of our youth volunteers who were really crucial for putting this together, Sue Minko and Claire Chaheselink. Um, they just recently graduated from high school, so they're getting ready for entering their first year at college, but they were really the people who developed the questions that were asked, figuring out how to send this out to youth, how to incentivize it. And with them, we had over 200 youth respond to barriers they face to service, and then just in general ways that we can focus our work on increasing youth service opportunities. Um, they are part of the State of Iowa Youth Action Council um, through the Iowa Department of Human Rights, who is one of our partners on this grant. Uh, thank you to Kayla for your work on helping us connect with youth and youth leaders and youth not traditionally asked to serve. Um, our other partner is the Iowa After School Alliance. So thank you to Hannah and Crystal for your work on this as well. Um, with both of those people and organizations from different backgrounds, I think we've really been able to kind of exit our realm of just like focusing on nonprofit work, but realizing how we can connect with youth across different sectors and realizing where there is that need. Um, so with them, then we've been able to connect with 30 volunteers, including our youth, um, to really launch this work. I think our volunteers have committed like 72 hours to youth service and service learning. So that's really exciting to have that network. Um, so after we kind of realized what the barriers to youth service were, which is always something that we're continuing to evaluate and continuing to want to um, investigate and do surveys for, but we've been able to provide trainings on service learning, create resources, learn how to incentivize youth, hold roundtables and focus groups, and just always continue to connect with youth throughout the process. So anytime we're doing something for a day of service, we're having their feedback on it and then really using their advice and their ideas to launch um, a program or a resource or different trainings like that. Um, and it's we're not done. We're entering our third year of working as a youth service and grantee. So I have a bunch of 9-11 day of service plans. We're trying to get ready because that's coming up on us. And I think these past two years have just been really exciting for us to kind of, you know, realize what the data says. And now where do we go from there and, and launch our work and help engage more youth and take more targeted approaches to um, connecting with youth who don't have those opportunities to serve in comparison to some of their peers, maybe. Um, and we're bringing another AmeriCorps VISTA on to help with this work, too. So it's exciting to give them the opportunities to develop professionally. Um, yeah, so just once again, this is such an honor. And um, I think Volunteer Iowa is proud to carry on Senator Warford's vision um, and build off his extraordinary work as one of our nation's greatest public servants. Um, so thank you again to Youth Service America. Um, feel free to look at our reports and reach out if you'd like to hear more about what we're doing. Um, I'm super excited for, you know, as a youth, I'm excited for what is in store um, and then ask somebody interested in this work too. So thank you again. Well, Cameron, I'm, I'm sorry they're going to let you go. Um, I think they should keep you on for another five years um, and, uh, and give you... Um, Give you lots of gold medals because you've done a terrific job and i know that it's uh i i know from from the ysa perspective that our staff uh you know michael and karen and and katie and nikki you know we, we've all felt so privileged um scott talks about you guys and and just how great you know it's been to work with you particularly cameron and and i know that your uh successor has big big shoes to fill so um Congratulations again on being a 2022 uh, Harris Wofford common ground uh, winner. We're we're really excited that uh, that you could be with us here today to accept the award. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right. Our next uh, winner is Volunteer Michigan. And I'm privileged to have had a Michigan driver's license for a couple of years when I lived in Ann Arbor. Uh, it's an amazing state. And uh, there is DNA in Michigan around youth service that is um, uh, is pretty incredible. Um, I, I give some of the credit to the Kellogg Foundation, who early on, you know, got involved in the whole youth service uh, movement and decided that youth voice was important for uh, for the great state of Michigan and uh, did a lot of early funding and convincing um, uh, ultimately the governors and, and the legislature and the state to support this. And it really is a statewide, um, you know, success story. And we're so thrilled to have Volunteer Michigan as an ongoing partner at YSA and uh, we just couldn't resist, Gina, you know, not um, not recognizing you guys today um, because you really have made youth service, as Harris would say, the common expectation and the common experience of all young people in Michigan. So congratulations on uh, on being a 2022 Harris Wofford Award winner. Thank you so much. Um, we are so honored. Um, to be able to receive this award. And we're also so appreciative of the support Youth Service America has provided to Michigan youth through the years. Um, so coming to this position as executive director of the Michigan Community Service Commission, I actually personally had a passion for youth volunteerism. I served now for almost 30 years as the advisor for the Gratiot County Community Foundation Youth Advisory Council, where I live. In fact, it's from that program that you mentioned. I was there from the beginning when Kellogg did that. I served on the board of trustees for the foundation and chose that that was the way I wanted to give my time. But I also, after was after being appointed to serve as executive director of the commission, I decided that I wanted to choose to continue in this role. Um, and I, because of my belief that youth voice matters and that youth engagement matters. Um, and to my delight, when I began at the Michigan Community Service Commission almost 10 years ago now, I found this incredible team of staff members and amazing partners who really did care about youth service. And it is this network of individuals and organizations in Michigan that are working hard now to launch a youth volunteer movement even broader than we've had before. It includes a platform that is tied to the United Nations Sustainable Goals, and it helps the youth create a service resume, allowing them to follow their passions and how they want to help. The movement also provides a recognition as part of Governor the Governor's Youth Volunteer Award Program, where Governor Whitmer lifts up Michigan youth who serve. And I have to say there could be countless heartwarming stories are where we have witnessed the impact of youth of all ages and how they make that in our world, in our state, in our communities. And we are excited as a commission to that we have provided hundreds of grants for projects throughout the state. And we do offer prioritization for all of our youth projects before the National Days of Service. And we're always amazed at what a small grant can generate and how much youth can accomplish with so little. And it takes their idea and allows it to be launched. So just in closing, we just wanted to thank you um, and for this recognition. And we want to do so on behalf of the Michigan youth and all of our partners for this incredible and tremendous honor. Thank you. Thank you, Gina. And, and you know, it, it really is our pleasure to recognize you. And, and I love the fact that you talked about the sustainable development goals. Um, you know, young people today realize that, yes, they're Michiganders, but they're also global citizens. And they realize that problems don't have passports. Uh, I spoke with a group of 16 young leaders from across Africa last week, and we talked a lot about the sustainable development goals. You know, these are issues that are problems in you know, the Upper Peninsula and, and further south in Michigan, but there are also problems that are in Zambia and South Africa and Nigeria and, and many other places uh, around the world. So uh, I think young people working on these issues together is, is just one of the most promising things and love, love, love the fact that, that you are really allowing these young people in Michigan to be global citizens. So again, thank you very much and congratulations on being a 2022 award winner. Thank you so much. We're All right. Take care. All right. Our next winner is um, really an, an organization and a program that is near and dear to our hearts. And, and people wonder, well, why is Youth Service America so interested in young people voting? 
And that is that we want to make the connection between the work that young people are doing and the work that public policymakers, you know, are doing to support their work. You know, we, we often ask the question, okay, you did this great job, you and your friends cleaning the beach. What's the United States Congress going to do to keep it clean? And so what are the connections between the public policymakers who we vote for every couple of years and the work that we're doing in the trenches, um, you know, and those of us who are supporting young people or the young people themselves working on health, education, human service, human rights and the environment. And these two um, dynamics really go hand in hand. And, and Pennsylvania Youth Vote has just done a marvelous job of making this commitment to have all 18 year olds in the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania vote. So we are thrilled um, to recognize their work to get all those young people to the polls. Um, they use voter registration, voter education, and of course, get out the vote um, uh, strategies that are focused on students that are newly eligible to vote for the first time. And Sajjai, I hope that you'll mention congratulations, first of all, for, for winning the 2022 award. But I hope you'll mention um, in your remarks why it's so important and why that first vote uh, is so essential. Uh, and hi, Annika, I see we have you in here as well. Why that first vote is so important and why it does impact you just like youth service for the rest of your life. So you guys can unmute yourselves, you are on. Oh, okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, so we are PA Youth Vote. I'm Saja and I have my fellow members, Anika and Gayatri with me. Um, and so we're a growing coalition of students and educators and organizations from all across the state. We're, we're all like very incredibly honored and grateful to be recognized um, for the Harris Wilford Common Good Award this year. And we simply wanted to take this opportunity to share a brief overview of like the work that we do and the ways that, um, you know, our, our mission is powered forward. So we're all focused, very focused on impair on empowering Pennsylvania youth to be registered, to be informed, to be ready to vote. Um, in all elections, we empower our vote, uh, youth to raise their voices and partake in democracy um, from their participation in elections to reaching out to their various political leaders um, about values that are important to them and issues that are very important to them. Um, this includes equipping them with knowledge about elections, a knowledge about different political candidates and leaders and different social affairs so they can all be active in um, current events. Civic engagement has never been more important than it is in our current social and political climate. And we, we strive to promote and uphold diversity and equity and inclusion in all the work that we do. So yeah, just continuing off of what Saja said, thank you so much. I'm Anika, hello everyone. And again, I just wanna remember that we're very honored to be awarded the Common Good Award. It means so much that our work is seen and heard because that is our main goal, just to get a bunch of kids and youth generations involved in civics. And there's a few different ways that we do that. So PA Youth Vote itself is a group and a team led by empowered students, students like ourselves, who are free and empowered to bring in their own passionate perspectives and to encourage others to join them in the process and to really make sure that their word is being heard as well. So we work peer to peer, which means that we like to reach out to other students about different ways that they can get civically engaged. And by doing so, by going student to student, the newer generations have a familiar face and someone relatable to connect with, and thus they can become more involved themselves. So Saja, I know that the slides just got put up. If you want to go back to the quotes so you can hit those as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so this is a quote that came from Senator Wofford in a 1992 address to graduates of the Harvard Kennedy School of Government. Um, his steadfast belief in this call to service is part of what makes receiving this word like such an honor. Um, and 
it's it's a call that we seek to answer through our work. Um, we have seen just how powerful like youth can be um, when it, when they all come together to vote. And pay youth vote is dedicated to continuing this positive pro progress by spreading information on how, where, when, and why um, we each vote in every single election. So this slide was just sort of summarizing how we work as a student-led team and our focus is to teach students that they too have a voice and that they don't have to wait until they're 18 or until a parent or adult member tells them how to get registered to vote or how to get involved or how to make change in their own community. Our whole goal is to empower them to see that they can make those own changes. So if we advance to the next slide, we can see three main ways that we work just to change the culture around policy and the culture of youth voting itself. One of the first things that we do is we build teams in schools. So these chapters, and we have one in our own school of Westchester Bayard, is that we build teams within the school and reach out to students among those own communities so they can see familiar faces and they can get involved in their own clubs. So for example, we have a club called When Westchester Votes, and that reaches out to all of the students in our high school, but then in also neighboring high schools and in their communities about different voter registrations and just the different political officials and different ways that they can get involved in research. This all goes towards educating them to be more civically engaged. Along with the building teams in schools, we also go into classrooms, which is a crucial step, especially now that we're out of COVID, thankfully coming back into classrooms, we're able to connect in face, person to person, and reach out to students on a new level. What's great about this option is that we're able to see each other on the same level in terms of age range so that the students can learn more about what their options are, where to go for community resources. We can add more resources for the teachers and their curriculum. And this is just a greater way to connect with the students and give them more resources in person. Along with that, one of my favorite ways that we reach out and change the culture is through our podcast called PA Youth Voices. And this podcast is honestly amazing. I love it because it's entirely student run. We write the scripts, produced, we even edit our own videos. And what's so special about that is that we're able to bring all of these diverse and different like perspectives from across each county in Pennsylvania as we're expanding more and more. And we're able to talk about social issues like mental health, voter registration, um, changing community and healing in times of struggle. And it's just a really great way to put in these big concepts to grasp in more colloquial terms. So in our next slide, some of the ways that we provide resources to our communities is to conduct candidate interviews and we'll help teachers arrange interviews with different candidates from any party in your classroom. That way it's a very holistic approach to the way that we get our younger members involved. Along with that, community involvement is key to making change and that's one of the biggest things we keep in mind at PA Youth Vote. So we encourage and provide resources for students to promote civic education and take action within their own communities, no matter how big or small those steps might be. Along with that, we found it very effective to have different outreach committees. So these are just different committees tasked with a specific way to get involved and to help reach out to the different people in our communities and across Pennsylvania. So we'll have, like I mentioned, the podcast committee, but we also have in-person outreach as well as DM outreach, just to name a few. To Gayatri to tell us a little bit more. Hi everyone, I'm Gayatri. And so yeah, now that we've told you a little bit about ourselves, um, here are some ways that you can help us. And um, as we said earlier, we're always helping build bridges between election officials, organizers, educators, and students in a way that benefits the community as a whole. And at those bullet points are just some ways that you can help us out or even help out your own communities. Um, we're a very community-based organization and we're centered on the perspective of youth. And um, we encourage you to promote equity in your public schools, uh, counter disinformation and voter suppression, and hold elected officials accountable. And so, yeah, these are just some ways to carry forward our mission. 
And in this day and age, social media is a very important part of any organization, especially ours. And these are just some ways that you can connect with us. Um, we encourage you to follow our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, just to stay updated with the content that we produce and stay in the loop on our events and how we're connecting with our community. And so, yeah, the information is live. And with that, thank you so much um, for having us here. We are so honored to um, have been considered and won this award. And yeah, have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. All right, I think I am back and uh, and want to thank the uh, the three young ladies from uh, PA Youth Vote for their incredibly um, visionary approach to this. And uh, you know, I know Harris would be so thrilled as the former senator of Pennsylvania, the former Secretary of Labor and Industry, and um, you know, he loved that state and and the fact that we're honoring young people from Pennsylvania. I know would just make him so happy today. So congratulations to you guys again. Keep up the great work. There isn't anything more important, as you said right now, uh, than civic engagement in America. And um, we're at a really crucial point. And it's so great to see you guys really um, leveraging the power of young people to make sure that their voices are heard. So again, congratulations. All right, our next winner is the Northfield Youth First. And, you know, when we talk about youth voice, um, these are folks up in Northfield, Minnesota, who are really doing the work. You know, there's an old expression that says, if you're, um, if you're not at the table, then you're often on the menu. And uh, I, I think um, that that's been proven to be true in many, many situations. If we think about the history of, of decision-making tables in this country, uh, they were pretty narrow tables. Um, you know, if you were a white male who owned property, uh, you got a seat at the table. And um, if you were a different religion than maybe a Protestant, um, you probably weren't there either. Um, so today those tables are much more rich and fulsome. Uh, but in most cases across the United States, we still don't see youth voice. And I think what's great about Northfield Youth First is that they're really changing that dynamic and and uh, and showing that work. So we're really thrilled to honor them today for their um, their work to promote and bring young people to decision making tables. So, um, Leah, uh, I will turn it to you. Congratulations on being a 2022 winner. And we are so thrilled to have you here. And I don't know what that background is, but I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> Yeah, it's wallpaper, but thank you. So why Youth on Boards? Um, like everybody here, we believe that young people should be involved in decisions that impact their lives and that tables are much stronger when youth are at the table and when, they're, um, when there's great diversity at the table. And youth are creative, they're involved, they're interested, and, they're, and they tend to be really bold. And so they push people in new directions. And so um, we come from a belief that we'll never underestimate young people and that um, bringing youth at, onto a board or at a table is going to make us stronger. So the history of um, our Youth on Boards program is that it started actually in 2006 with um, a, a mayor's youth council. And then in 2014, we, we expanded to the district youth council. But then in 2015, um, Youth Prize, which is a great foundation here in the um, Twin Cities area, came to Northfield and said, we really want to see how far we can push, how far we can really try and expand a program in a city. And so we launched the Youth on Boards program. And so in 2006, we had 14 students um, serving that went up to about 22 students in 2014. And we peaked in 2018, 19, right before the pandemic, where we had over 96 students that served on different boards and commissions throughout the city. Dropped a little bit in the 1920 timeframe, but um, we're building back up. And right now we have over 85 different youth that serve on different boards and commissions throughout the city. So that's school board, 
um, city council, advisory councils, and then lots of different nonprofits throughout the city. So um, what are the benefits to our youth that participate? Well, they get to serve with adults. They get exposure to different careers, both in and outside of the city. They're meeting new people. They're understanding how government works in the school district. They understand the political process. And then the biggest piece of all is they have um, voice in decisions that are made um, about what's happening in their world. Um, and what is the benefit to the city and the school board and the, and the local nonprofits? Well, they get this youth perspective and it's a different perspective, as I said before, and it's a valuable one. Um, and it brings diversity, brings diversity to the table, brings diversity to the thought. And then it also helps um, build interest in serving at a city level or um, city board, city commissions, maybe city careers, school boards, et cetera. So that helps build the future pipeline of who might serve. So we don't do it alone. We have great partners in our Youth on Boards program. Our biggest partner is Youth Prize. As I said, this wonderful foundation out of the Twin Cities area. Um, they believe youth voice um, is paramount to a, a strong society. And so they are a great partner for us. And then our city of Northfield staff and our, our public school staff. The other piece of the youth, uh, the youth First program is a program called Northfield Youth Bank. Youth Bank is an international program. It was started in Northern Ireland and in 2015, Youth Prize, again, great partner, brought it to the United States and, and Northfield started a youth bank. So what is a youth bank? It's really a youth led grant making um, program. So we put money into the hands of youth, um, into young people, and they're run directly for young people by young people. They do community research. They decide what in the community is an issue they want to tackle. And then they ask their peers to develop grants that would address that issue. And so um, they, uh, we've been going for eight years. We've had almost 60 youth that have been trained in as team members or as grant makers. So they've learned this process. We've, in those eight years, we've re received over a hundred grant proposals um, from youth in the community. And within that hundred grant proposals, 435 youth have been involved in writing those grant proposals. So that's 435 youth in our community that said, I see an issue, but I also have a solution and I wanna be part of it. 265 youth have seen their grant proposals funded. And um, so that's 53 grants in total. And our youth bank alone has given out $144,000, almost $145,000. And so this is real money making real difference in our community. And they funded really interesting projects, projects that have come from the minds of youth that say, this is what's important to us. So um, issues that have addressed mental health and how do you support mental health? Um, a scholarship fund for kids to get their driver's license. We have kids that can't afford that and you need behind the wheel courses and classroom courses and that's really expensive. So how do we get more youth driving safely? Um, we had one project where kids said there isn't a safe space for my younger siblings to play and so we helped build a city park. So it's really youth looking at what's important in their community and saying, we can make a difference. And so through Youth Bank, we have kids learning all kinds of great things. They learn, learn interview skills, they um, learn how to create a grant or review a grant, um, teamwork, responsibility, et cetera, et cetera. So great program, really fun to uh, be a part of and to see where youth go and what they want to change in their community. Again, Youth Prize is our key partner. We couldn't do this without them. Um, and so we're, we're forever grateful to them. And so kind of just to wrap up, um, we really believe our community is stronger when young people have seats at our decision-making tables. And through our Youth First programs, um, Northfield youth have their voices heard and are actively engaged in civic life. And so we're really grateful for um, you recognizing this program and feel very honored to be part of this group. Thank you very much. Thanks, Malia. And, you know, I'm, I'm constantly reading about studies that show when corporations, for example, have women in the senior leadership position that they actually make more money. 
Um, you know, the more diverse organizations are, the more successful they are. And thank you for reminding us that part of that diversity is really bringing young voices in. And as you said, you know, young people bring amazing ideas, new ideas. Um, they're, they're risk takers. They bring yeah. their peers along with them. Um, these are biological factors, actually. These aren't social factors. These are young people around the world, you know, just tend to be more curious and, and more capable of coming up with new ideas than adults are. It's part of that adolescent brain. And I think without them at the table, we really lose something. So I think you're on to something big. The fact that you trust them with money, uh, I think, says a lot. Um, and congratulations to you on being a 2022 Harris Wofford Award winner. Thank you. We're very honored. All right. Take care. Thanks. All right. Our final winner today is an organization that I'm particularly fond of because I've done a lot of work with them down through the years. Um, FFA is, um, I think they their big claim to fame is that they have the largest uh, youth conference in the world. Uh, and they actually have to hold all their events twice because there isn't a room big enough to put all the people in. Christine, I don't know if that's still true. But uh, I've heard lots of fun stories about that. And my friend Zach, who played his fiddle when he was president of FFA many years ago, uh, I still see Zach in D.C. Uh, Zach Kinney, you, you may remember that name. Um, but um, FFA is, is really a terrific organization. And we're recognizing them today for their living to serve work to provide quality programs, including National Days of Service, by the way, resources, including living to serve grants, recognition, and opportunities for your young members to put their leadership into action through service engagement. Uh, of all the big youth development organizations in the United States, nobody does it better than you guys. And you continue to be a leader and the rest of us look up to you for, uh, for what you're doing. So we are particularly thrilled to be recognizing you with a 2022 Harris Wofford Award today. So. Thank you, Christine, for being here and, and would love to hear from you. Uh, as an organization with over 800,000 members in uh, all 50 states, the Virgin Islands of Puerto Rico, uh, we're honored and thrilled to be able to share uh, the dedication of our members and the resources that they use to serve their communities. For over 95 years, uh, the National FFA organization um, and service has been the fabric of our organization that has lasted um, for a long time and that has been a part of our motto which focuses on the mindset that we work to instill in all of our members which is living to serve as an organization we offer multiple platforms uh, for service that incorporate service requirements into our awards and recognition programs and in 2021 we were pleased to see that more than 24,000 students engage directly in meaningful service projects through the living to serve platform this equated to over 420,000 service hours with an estimated economic income, uh, impact of close to $12.5 million. Our Living to Serve platform empowers every student in every classroom to make a positive impact for their community by providing quality programs, resources, and opportunities to put their leadership into action through the service engagement um, one of our major components of this platform is really focusing in on providing a series of grants, which provide funding to support service projects through a competitive application process that addresses the local needs within the focus areas of community safety, environmental responsibility, hunger, health and nutrition, and community engagement. FFA members collaborate with to meet authentic needs within their communities. Through these projects, members build strong community relationships, increase student engagement, and work to grow the visibility of their agriculture programs. In addition, students are offered opportunities for meaningful research, hands-on learning, real life teachable moments, including career exploration through service. Um, and I would like to highlight a project that one of our urban chapters, the U School FFA chapter, which is in its second year in Philadelphia, uh, has spent the school year designing and creating green roof on a shipping container. This project is the first step towards a depaving master plan to the green, uh, the inner city school campus. Students engaged in this project have been able to explore multiple themes related to environmental justice, urban heat island effect, 
and the uh, air quality, all of which are impacting by the greening efforts of this project will improve. The students are making a positive difference in their school community. During our national convention and expo, we engage members in our national days of service. Uh, this is an opportunity for members to give back to the city of Indianapolis uh, through acts of service by partnering with local organizations. In 2020, because of the pandemic, we hosted our convention virtually and invited members to engage in service at the local level. Chapters signed up and hosted service events in their local communities, following local, state, and federal safety guidelines during the month of October. This was so successful that we were able to um, continue this opportunity and, and engage chapters at the local level, even though we returned to an in-person convention in 2021 and plan to do it again in 2022. As a result, I'd like to share a success story from the Henderson FFA chapter that received funding uh, to aid them in making safety supply bags for families and shelters and those in need during the pandemic. One senior FFA member from the chapter shared, it felt good to create the emergency kits because it made me feel like I was helping during a pandemic where I spent most of my time feeling hopeless. Our organization, um, we are working to grow the next generation of leaders who will change the world. We believe these change makers will make a difference because of their commitment to serve and lead service engagement opportunities within their communities. I am honored to accept this award on behalf of the National FFA organization and want to thank our staff for their dedication, vision, focus, in providing our members and chapters with the support and resources to make a positive difference. We truly believe in the last line of our model, which is living to serve. And thank you for the opportunity and thank you, Youth Service America, for uh, this recognition. And Christine, you know, you you struck a couple of great notes. I, I know that people talk about experiences in the United States Army where they are brought in from one coast or the center of the country and they meet people from lots of other places. And I know that that's one of the great um, results of, of the work that you do and particularly of your national conference where young people meet other young people from other parts and you know backgrounds and, and you're really such a great mixing pot in so many ways. And, and I know the value proposition of that that helps us understand that we really are one country and um, and that young people have so much, uh, you know, power when they work together. Uh, the, of course, you know, your your slogan, living to serve, is, is so powerful. And it always reminds me of the fact that service is power. I mean, what you're really doing is giving young people the secret to power, uh, to leadership, is service. And... Um, as they finally, as that dawns on them, you know, to realize that it's much better to be on the giving end of the power stick than to be on the receiving end, um, to be on the playing field as opposed to be sitting up in the stands. Um, you know, that's where people want to be. They want to be players. They don't want to be spectators. And I think, you know, FFA really gives those young people that opportunity. And so we're so thrilled to, uh, to give you the 2022 Harris Wofford Award. So congratulations and thanks for all your hard work. And I look forward to, uh, uh, to more interactions with you in the future. Absolutely, thank you so much. All right, take care. All right, that brings us to the end of the awards. Uh, we wanna thank and congratulate again, Queen Anne's County Public Schools, Volunteer Iowa, Volunteer Michigan, PA Youth Vote, Youth First in Northfield, Minnesota, and of course, National FFA. You are six organizations that are doing amazing work that completely align with uh, the work that we're trying to do in the 50 by 250 campaign for America's 250th birthday. And uh, in the future, um, all the award winners will be members of this great coalition that we're building. So we encourage all of you to sign that Declaration of Service very much modeled after the Declaration of Independence. And um, you'll find that on the 50by250.org website. But until we meet again, um, thank you again. And this will close out the 2022 Harris Wofford Common Good Awards presentations. Thank you again, everybody.